Welcome to Douglas Wilson's The Podcast, presented by Canon Press. Welcome to the podcast. This is episode 210. Glad you could join us. Uh, my name is Douglas Wilson. Good to have you. Good to have you here. Welcome aboard. All right. So I want to talk uh, in this episode a little bit about God's path to victory. God's path to victory. And when you see <laughs> book titles like that, uh, God's, God's path to wealth or God's path to victory or, or God's path to good times, I'm mindful of uh, if a prophet came to prophesy wine and beer, he'd be just the spokesman for this people. We, we want our blessings from God like he was running a convenience store. We want it, we want it like we get coffee from a, a drive through coffee joint. We want our coffee hot and now. But God's path to victory is no fun. That's the point. That, this is the secret. God's path to victory is no fun. And the only thing that enables us to work in accordance with his purpose and plan, is if we understand that it's not supposed to be fun, making it fun. So the person, uh, the person who understands the telos, who understands the point, is going to be able to contextualize it. If we don't, then we can't. So for example, Hebrews tells us that no discipline seems pleasant at the time, but it's painful. But afterward, it yields the peaceful fruit of an upright life. So it's like farming. Uh, you're out in the field. You're out in the heat, of the heat of the sun. You're working like a dog. You're parched. You're hungry. You're, you know, it's a, it's a tough bit of labor that you're, that you're doing, right? If it's the first time you've ever done it, you might be thinking to yourself all the time, this is no fun. This is no fun. But let's say you're a ten-year veteran, and this is um, not your first rodeo. You've been through it a number of times, and you understand that once this harvest is in and in the barn, then comes Thanksgiving, then comes the festival, then comes harvest home. So what happens is God's path to victory involves a lot of pain, involves a lot of hard work, it involves a lot of sacrifice, it involves laying it all out. As my son once said to his mom. Uh, Mom, baskets of fruit are heavy. Baskets of fruit are heavy. So what we have to do is recognize that this is a feature and not a bug. God wants us to uh, learn that his path for us to victory or his path for us to deliverance or his path for us to the harvest or his path for us to fruition, all of this is fraught with difficulties. It is through many tribulations, Paul says, that we enter the kingdom of heaven. All who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but, but rather painful. And so, consequently, as soon as we understand that this football coach is really, really tough, he has uh, a number of banners on the hanging up in the field house, representing state championships. And that's why players want to be recruited by him, because they know he's going to run them through the ringer. They know how tough it's going to be. Why do the Navy SEALs or the or Rangers or Green Berets, or why, why do people volunteer for those things? Well, because they know it's going to be really, really hard and consequently worthwhile. When you flip the script, as our pampered generation has done, what happens is you say, we want to make this accessible to everybody. We don't want anybody to be left behind. We don't want it to be competitive. We're going to give everybody a participant ribbon. There's no more first place. We're, we've got a t-ball league in the city that doesn't keep score anymore because we don't want anybody to feel bad about losing. Well, what happens, what you, has just happened is that you've made uh, winning worthless. Nothing worthwhile in this fallen world comes easy. Nothing comes easy. And so consequently, God's path to victory, God's path to the finals, 
involves a lot of hard work. It involves a lot of tribulation. It involves difficulty after difficulty. And like Shasta in The Horse and His Boy, when he does the remarkable thing and they get to the hermit's uh, place in time in order, he is immediately sent off to do another more difficult task. And that was the lesson he had to learn. When you do something that's really difficult, your first reward is oftentimes to be given something more difficult. But don't forget the telos. Don't forget that God arranged it this way for a reason. So we're continuing with the podcast. This is episode 210. Thanks for staying with us. As we, um, in our study of the sins that are listed in the New Testament, this is our study from our theology, we've come now to ethnos, ethnos. Last time it was ethnikos, this time it's ethnos. This word simply means Gentile or nation or people. But in a few places, it is translated in the same spirit as our previous word, ethnikos, as heathen. So, like we said last time, there's no sin in being a Gentile. It's not sinful to be a Gentile. But the Gentile nations were without God, and because they were without God, they um, frequently began acting as though they were without God, and that um, resulted in problems. In some place, heathen doesn't have any pejorative sense, but in other places, it does. So, Acts uh, 4.25, for example, who by the mouth of thy servant David has said, why did the heathen rage and the people imagine vain things? Here, the heathen are the kind of people who would rage, right? That, that means there's, a, there's an ethical component here. What we have here are heathen acting like, you know, heathens. We have the same thing in 2 Corinthians. This is uh, 2 Corinthians 11.26. In journeyings often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils by mine own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren. So there's a long list of uh, negatives, and one of them is in perils by the heathen. When people are not worshiping the true God of heaven, then this is going to come out in their behavior. What begins as a simple descriptive term becomes a term that reflects on the character of the people involved, and that is what we have here. A similar thing happened um, with the word pagan. It originally meant someone who lived out in the countryside, because these people were converted to Christianity late because Christianity was, uh, in the early centuries, Christianity was an urban movement. So the people out in the sticks were converted late. It became a term that referred to their unbelief. Eventually, it became the term you would use to describe the wildest member of your fraternity back in college. He's a real pagan. Right? So it began with um, people who were urban and sophisticated were more likely to be Christian. People who lived out in the countryside were more likely to, to be clinging to the old ways. And, um, and so consequently, they'd hang on to the old superstitions. And they were country d- dwellers, pagans. Continuing with episode uh, 210 of the podcast, uh, the book I want to review this time is um, by David Bonson. And I had the privilege of reading an advanced copy of it in a PDF. And it was good enough that I, as soon as I get my hard copy, my intention is to start at the beginning and read it again. The book is called There's No Free Lunch. It's a statement of classic free market economics across the board. And the way and David has structured it in a very accessible way, it, it's a meaty book. But it's a meaty book where it's a huge Texas-sized steak. But this meaty book has been cut up into bite sizes by David. So what he's done is he has each section, there's a couple hundred lessons, you might say. They're not chapters. They're not long enough to be chapters. Most of them are just a page. But there's a couple hundred of these lessons. And each lesson is begun with a quotation from someone. It could be von Mises, it could be Milton Friedman, it could be uh, Thomas Sowell, it could be Hazlitt, you know, there is the quotation. And then below that is uh, Bonson's commentary on the quotation. He, he summarizes it or puts it together or makes some additional 
comments on it. And it really is, it, it covers the whole waterfront of classic economic issues, whether it's minimum wage or trade or the meaning of productivity. It's just a really good book. It's the sort of thing that if you wish you knew or un- understood economics, but you didn't want to get into economic theory, meaning you didn't want to get into the deep weeds on economic theory, you didn't want to read an 800 page uh, economics uh, textbook. This is the book for you. It's accessible. Any intelligent, educated person can read and follow what's being said. And it really covers all the basic issues. There's no free lunch and all the reasons why there is no free lunch and what what free market capitalists are actually about. What are we actually after? If you enjoyed this episode, check out Jim Wilson's Principles of War, a handbook on strategic evangelism. Order today at canonpress.com.